Thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone for coming, especially thank you to uh, Yucho and Sukun for being with us today. Um, I, I think one of the things we wanted to do with this panel uh, was tied to what Leap brought as its pavilion project in our booth. So if you haven't had a chance to take a look at that, please do uh, pop over in the fair later this afternoon. Um, that piece is all about a very specific place, uh, Hong Kong, and about using uh, this place, the identity of this place and its artists in order to define uh, a way of working for young artists today. Um, and I think what was really important about that project is that the artists come from everywhere. Uh, maybe they were born in Hong Kong and now live outside. Maybe they were born in Florida and now live in Hong Kong. Uh, there's a lot of kind of in and out and cosmopolitanism and sort of global discourse happening there. Um, and so with this talk, we wanted to kind of push that in a different direction and think about also migration, diaspora, hybridity, moving around in general, uh, but less looking at a, a particular place uh, and more at this kind of general Asia, Europe, back and forth. And I think especially it's so great to have the two of you here because it's so hard kind of going through your bios when I was organizing it, <laughs> especially, uh, you, Joe, you have, you know, 20 different bios that have a different combination of Shanghai, Paris, Hong Kong, different places that you've lived at various times, uh, it's hard to stay updated. Uh, so I think that's uh, sort of the, the heart of what we want to talk about today. Um, we'll keep our talk relatively uh, prompt so we can sort of get the whole schedule uh, back on schedule. Um, we'll start out by hearing uh, from each artist for around five or 10 minutes, and then we'll have a conversation after that, and then open up to questions from the floor. Uh, so, uh, Sukun, maybe you could just take us away with introducing who you are, where you're from, what your work is about. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. My name is Sukun. I'm a Singaporean artist that is based here in Paris, as well as, Sing as, well as in Singapore. I'm a multidisciplinary artist. I make sculpture, installation, video, photography, and drawings. So, what is most pronounced in my work is that I use diverse medium. But what ties my work together is the interest to reconsider what we know as truth, real, or fact. I'm interested in the unstable nature of existence. And I do that through presenting different perspectives of reality, as well as creating alternative universe. So I'm going to introduce briefly two works of mine. The first one is Exercise Me. Exercise Me is a photography, videography, and performance project that is first exhibited in ICA Gallery in Singapore, and then in Singapore Biennale, and last October here in Paris at Ballet de Tokyo. Prochaine image, s'il vous plaît. So, Exercise Me is, um, Exercise Me talks about the coming of age anxiety, the, un the wanting to get rid of the unease and the unfamiliar feeling that's associated with being a teenager. It speaks about the difficult metamorphosis between childhood and adulthood. Prochaine image. Merci. Um, the aesthetic and composition of um, this work is influenced by Balthus, the Swiss painter. In Balthus' paintings, girls appear to be lethargic, self absorbed characters that immerse inside their own world within an interior setting. So, Balthus' painting reminded me of my own teenage angst, as well as the laziness that grew out of depression and anxiety. Prochaine image, s'il vous plaît. So, the makeup, the, um, the death makeup, tries to show the darkness within a, a, a sort of rebellion as well as um, non-conformity that is worn in contrast to the uniform, a symbol of conformity. So the makeup, the poses, the school uniform are all the overlapping between reality and fiction. The interior world brought to the exterior. Prochaine image, s'il vous plaît. So this other work, well, I often do in my three-dimensional work is I like to put two um, unlikely material together to create a sort of visual oxymoron. So your love is like a chunk of gold is a work that is um, a juxtaposition of the real, the supernatural, as well as science fiction. Prochaine image, s'il vous plaît. 
So the work, uh, th th these are a series of bread with crystal, crystal growth. The crystal on the bread makes the bread look strange and alien looking, sort of like an object from outer space, but from a planet that's far from ours and with a different type of moldy bread. And it's also reminded me of the of Gothic romance novel where uncanny things happen within the mundane. <coughs> I see. And the so the bread a nourishing food with crystal growth make it a contrasting object of familiarity and strangeness, comfort and pain, similar to the experiences of love. Visitors are often surprised to find out that these are actual bread. They often thought that these are rocks. I really and love that just having the crystal growth on the bread makes the bread look more like a geological object than bread. Push any much to bread. So this is this is this last image is a new public sculpture that is right now installed in Gilman Barracks in Singapore. It's a public commission that is um, commissioned by Platform Projects and it is an extension of the Crystal Bread series. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so there's a few threads that we can kind of pull out of that to look into uh, as uh, Icho introduces her work and then as we go into conversation. I think one of them is sort of the global nature of this adolescent or emotional state that you're describing. Um, and then maybe there's also this other parallel thread of, of femininity and sort of femininity across culture, adolescence across culture. Um, and then the second would be the role of, of the object and especially the uncanny object and kind of creating a bridge across experiences and it, it doesn't really matter uh, what your background is exactly. because what you're experiencing is so different from uh, whatever you're used to, that that sort of transcends all kinds of mm -hmm. cultural difference. That's right, and uh, all culture has different folk laws that uh, addresses the uncanny happening within the mundane. It's not just um, like um, English classic um, Gothic romance novel. In uh, Chinese culture, there's Liao Zai, which also has like you know, uh, which also has like stories about things that happen within the um, within normal life that are really like supernatural, and these are things that interest humanity in the sense that there are more to what we can feel, see, or touch. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you, your work also often takes us to a very kind of supernatural place or a state of wonder. Um, do you want to start directly with your video or do you want to speak uh, first about what we'll see? Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Okay. Thank you for inviting me today uh, in Paris. And uh, thank you, Lead Magazine, and thank you, Asia Now, Alexandra, John, and everybody here. And um, I think uh, it would be great to take a look at the videos, although I agree very much with um, what you said. So I think um, it's great that you put us together. I think there are many similarities in the process of the work, although um, its manifestation is different, but I think the approach is very similar. So. Um, there's not much left to say besides watching the videos. Oh, 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 oh,
if you could introduce first uh, your own background, uh, sort of where you come from, when and why you decided uh, to well, end yeah. up in, in Paris, and, um, and, and how you kind of have navigated the territories of uh, both the fine art exhibition circuit as well as sort of design, artistic direction. Um, could you give us a little bit of kind of a, a personal of history course. in that respect? Um, I was born in China, but I was raised in Italy, and I graduated between London and Paris. And I started my work as a career in Paris, uh, where I had the chance to be exhibiting, doing solo exhibitions. So I think if you have seen the video, I've seen that uh, there are already a lot of works, and I've always been very productive and prolific. And I think when you start at a very young age, uh, there's a sort of maturity, but there's also a way uh, you, are, you are unconscious about s your emotions and uh, you're exploring yourself through the works as well, joy and pain. So I, I, I've always been on the go, just you know, producing, producing uh, in the making, but I, I think in the past two years, I have ch uh, tried to change and challenge myself and my language as well by, first of all, because I've had the chance to be uh, collaborating with some fashion brands, and that was a deliberate choice. I know that many Purist uh, people from the art world, they're very much against uh, fashion. But I think uh, if you're just an artist and if you're just um, working by yourself or, and about yourself and what you think, it's uh, very self-centered. And uh, I think by putting yourself uh, to the s in the skin of a different audience and the art world and uh, to a different industry, in a way, you abstract yourself from your own reality. And for me, it was a very big lesson. And um, I'm also very active on social media, and thanks to the um, expansion of social media, uh, I can you know, also showcase my work every day and also produce work every day on different platforms of social media, which is a great uh, platform I really believed in, uh, which goes well with the, the idea of being multimedia. And uh, thirdly, I think uh, being an artist is about also, um, ju also evolving as you evolve. And I think I'm in a stage right now where um, I'm preparing my exhibition next year, the ICP in New York. So there will be new works, and these works will be very different from these because I think uh, I'm in a different period of my life and different period of my research where I try to look at the emotions where, where these uh, certain brought me to make certain works, and now how I can make other works coming from a different state of emotion. And uh, so I think uh, being an artist, we are, uh, we in a way communicate. Uh, art is a way of communication, it's a tool of communication. And uh, I would like to, through my art, to be able to also help other people that are feeling the same or, and, and that they are trying to um, develop their own creativity, develop also understand their own emotion. I think emotion, understand your own emotion, which has different stages. And uh, it's a different view, a different sophistication, a different age. And uh, right now, I'm, I am exploring to see whether I can be more detached uh, through these emotions and whether the kind of work that can generate from these new states can be different. Uh, now you, you have a very kind of complex mix of audiences because of this way of working. You have sort of a mainstream media, and then you have social media, and then you yes. have kind of the art audience, but then also geographically, kind of from, uh, well, in French language, English language, Chinese language. Do you have kind of an ideal viewer for a particular project, or is every work different? Uh, I think um, I, I'm interested in challenging myself and challenging also the audience to have a surprise element. I don't like to copy other people. I don't like to have a pattern. I think we make our own path in this journey, in this lifetime. And uh, so um, uh, I think uh, I'm interested in that capability of switching. I've been also doing a lot of ad campaigns uh, as a talent, being the campaigns. And uh, so I think it's a great chance for um, for me as, a, as an artist and also for the audience to be able also to see my work and to uh, represent the, uh, the role of an artist also in, in the mainstream advertising campaigns and everything to let, to record. I recently done the Levi's 
ad and uh, I, my life was recorded and um, uh, for you know just a, a day um, long and I thought it was interesting how uh, they would like to uh, show uh, the, the life of fine artist um, in such a context. Generally they have musicians like Alicia Keys etc so they trace also a day in the life of Alicia Keys so for me it was an honor to be able to uh, you know that the record and it was also a collaboration because I think, you know, how to present yourself, how to present the role of an artist, which is really important. Now there are many artists that, you know, are also um, in the advertising or trying to get themselves also in the advertising, etc. So I think it's a trend that uh, has been launched. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope, you know, we can keep on carving new way of Absolutely. existing, etc. Uh, so, Khan, could you also share kind of your personal narrative, sort of when you um, decided to leave Singapore, spend time here, uh, why and how that maybe affected your ways of working? Um, I went to school in New York, so um, I, spent, I graduated in, from School of Visual Arts in New York. And uh, after New York, I spent two years in the Wrights Academy in Amsterdam. And uh, I lived for some time in Brussels as well. And and all this time I've been traveling to and fro from this country and Singapore. And right now, because of my husband, who is French, I'm living in Paris. And um, I think like, you know, um, like uh, I feel that sometimes identity is overemphasized, that, um, that we can be like, oh, how can I s how can I put it like you know in a in a in a popular way I would say like like Austin Power international man of mystery but like take away mystery but an international person and it's it's part of like it's the how would I say like it's no longer so difficult to travel it's not a big deal to live here and there and it's I'm not unique I've, there's a lot of people who has the same experience and I think like you know this is becoming a quite a common. Um, con um, consciousness now to be to have all different type of cultural and uh, social experience. Mm -hmm. Migration, yeah. Migrating art scenes, right? Um, I, I think that's what's so gratifying. You know, uh, we're uh, at Leap. We're a contemporary magazine, but of course we also kind of deal with histories. And now that we've launched our inaugural uh, French edition, we've been thinking a lot about. Uh, kind of this first generation of Chinese artists who ended up in Paris in particular, kind of Huang Yongping, Wang Du, mm -hmm. uh, these kinds of figures who, um, and Chen Zhen especially actually, uh, who just had this major retrospective at uh, the Rockbun Museum in Shanghai. And it's so interesting to see that work again now because it feels so old and so out of touch with kind of the way that people approach cultural difference now. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it really is kind of isolated into these binaries and dualisms and kind of ways of, of thinking, you know, as if you could define entire regions within these kind of iconic images. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's so gratifying now to see uh, that maybe that question hasn't been resolved, but it's been made moot. I, I think it's not something that you necessarily have to deal with every day um, as you move forward through your work. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I wonder then wh why it's interesting to sort of maintain this identity that is based partially in, in a particular place. Um, kind of what, what does place offer you now if not this kind of cultural marker? Can I say? Okay. I just think that uh, things have changed so much because of social media and uh, things are much faster. And I think when before an artist, first of all, to be discovered, uh, you have to have a curator that goes and discovers you. Now you put up your stuff on the internet, maybe you can be discovered faster, you know? And second of all, I think also, um, because we're so used to flashes, images constantly. So I think um, a work of art that was dated and it was so identifiable with a certain so society, a certain time, nowadays, unless it's a great work of art which has the strength, like Picasso. I just went to the Picasso Mania exhibition. I think everything is Picasso, from his erotic drawings to sculptures to everything. And uh, to me, that's something that stays in time. There, I find a lot of work, um, many contemporary art, artworks um, 
are lacking a little bit of that depth and that strength mm -hmm. that comes from inside and just, wow, just takes you away. You know, you're absorbed. Like when I look at her work, I feel like, I feel something, you know, it touches me. And many times I walk through an exhibition or, or an art fair, and not, um, I don't feel touched. I feel okay, and especially also because of the closeness of the fashion world and uh, the art world, which has great aspects because it gives, of course, visibility, platform, it's mutual beneficial, but at the same time, sometimes when I walk into an art exhibition or go to a fashion show, I don't know the difference between the two <laughs> because I don't feel that emotional, it doesn't make my heart beat, mm. and that's what I want. Something that I look at it, I just want to cry. You know, like being in a room, a silence. There's nothing. That silence can be beautiful. Yesterday, I went to a yoga class in Paris. It was for an hour and a half. The teacher did not say a word. And to me, that was the most interesting experience I've ever had in such a long time. Because just the silence, just being together, hearing the breathing of the person, it was so emotional. At the end, I wanted to cry. It was because we're rarely in the silence in today's world. It's always a sound. And so I would like to see more things that can touch me internally. Absolutely, and I wonder how much of that has to do with uh, kind of this, this context, the circuit that we're in. I, mean, I, um, I imagine maybe you travel on a little bit of a different schedule, but I feel like I'm totally just locked into the art fair world. It's kind of, you see, not Paris, but Asia Now and FIAC, not Singapore, but Art Stage Singapore, not Shanghai, but Art 21. But I mean, going back, I think I just, I don't want to say that everything's bad in the contemporary art world. Actually, there are great things such as, you know, this fair, uh, Asia Now, which gives uh, a highlight about Asian art in Paris and uh, bringing leaf and launching like from Chinese edition to French edition, which shows how the world has changed, how French people can make a fair about Asian art and how an Asian magazine has the challenge to bring from originally Chinese content into uh, French content. So I think things are moving, things are changing, and um, we just have to be open and embrace the changes. And that's the hybrid, your topic. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I think one of the dangers of this idea of sort of a post-identitarian culture, though, um, is that it feels like we're kind of stuck in this forever now. It's very hard to see how things can evolve from here, kind of if we already feel like we're in a relatively frictionless uh, and undifferentiated state and kind of one place is the same as another and everyone's traveling, then how does that evolve? I is there a, a direction that we should be working in or is universalism just kind of the assumed state of forever into the future? Like, of course for an artist like, or for anyone else, there's this whole other frontier in your head that you can explore. Like, you, know, it's, you, do, you don't have, the exterior world is not the only world that that you can that you get in touch with the interior world is a vast expanse of a big universe that we get in touch with as well and uh, through this hybridity or uh, this um, globalism we still have ourselves and our inner world that we can uh, cultivate and this and that's the reason why we want to do art and art is that art is that connection between this outside world and the interior world mm. I agree with everything you say. <laughs> uh, great, well we have a few minutes left uh, for questions, uh, if anyone would be interested. Um, by all means, please make use of our guests today. It's really rare to have such great minds together to be able to talk about these kinds of things. Uh, I have a question for you. <laughs> um, like, how do you preserve the pieces from a practical point of view, like if they're made of real bread, how do you, uh, pres how do people preserve that? Uh um, actually, bread is pretty much very easy to preserve. You see, like boulangerie here in uh, Paris, there's a lot of old breads uh, stored at some um, as display. And uh, w my bread, once they are dry, like really rock dry, I will coat them with a layer of epoxy resin, and you will make them. Um, water resistant, and when the, the bread is water resistant, it's submerged into a crystal chemical solution. The crystal will slowly grow on the bread. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Here. Um, I would like to know 
Um, what do you think would, could be changed now that we open this uh, new Asian, Asian art in Paris, so in Europe, and I choose Paris because uh, I'm Parisian, and I felt that uh, the knowledge of contemporary art in Europe was quite unknown. And I think that Paris had the honor to do it. And I would like to know wh what you feel as artists you are, um, how you think the future will be for you not now that we have opened this door. I mean, do you think that uh, it will develop for you some uh, new um, markets or some new openings, some new galleries waiting for you? What do you think? It will happen now. For Asian artists, I mean. Yeah, I think it's great to be able to have fairs like, uh, you know, Asia Now to give a platform to uh, famous artists as well as upcoming artists uh, curated uh, for the show, for the, for the fair. And uh, we hope that it will be a chance for them to have more shows in Paris, in Europe, and so on. Yes. We'll do it. We'll go on. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, thank you all very much for being here. Thank you very much, uh, Ijo and Sokun. I very much appreciate your time. Uh, I feel like I've certainly learned a lot in terms of thinking about this positioning. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, thanks for being here. Thank you, Thank you uh, Thank Alexandra, you. Asia Now, everyone for having us.